Welcome to Hong Kong. Hello, Hong Kong Island. I'm Wilco, and in today's video, I'm going to be spending one day exploring Hong Kong Island. So why don't you join me while we head up here <laughs> into the clouds. We may not be able to see anything, but we're going to head up to the peak. But first, we're going to head to Central, and I'm going to learn a little bit more about Hong Kong and a little bit more about some of the unique things in this city. So if you've never visited, or if you're just curious, stick around. Well, let's get into it. So we're here in Central in Hong Kong and if you come to Central you won't be able to miss this. There's a massive HSBC building here which is a huge skyscraper. It's almost one of the biggest in the city and next to it you've got Chartered Bank and then next to that you've got Bank of China and one of the things that I noticed really when I first got here, I went to the cash machine and this is very odd but this is just the kind of stuff I notice. I think. I got um, some cash out of the cash machine and the first thing I noticed was you've got the HSBC logo on the money. So I was like, well that's really strange, like why? I've never seen a note before or currency with the logo of a commercial bank on it. Normally it's like the country's uh, central bank that issues the money. So I was really curious to why, even on this one here, it's 500 notes, you can see it's HSBC on it. But then even more confusingly, when I looked at some of the other notes that I got from the cash machine, there's a different bank on it. You actually get currency that's printed by all of the different banks. So Chartered Alliance, HSBC, and the China Bank and they're all circulating. They're the similar colour, but they're different design, but all of the banks print the money, which I was just found fascinating. And also you'll notice you've got this little guy on the front here, this lion. Let's go check it out because you'll actually spot him. He's outside of this HSBC building. He does not get run over by these trams. Oh. We've got the two lions over here and uh, one of the things that I learned on the, the walking tour, which was super interesting, is that the lion with their mouth closed is the one that's about the money staying in. And this guy here, the lion with his mouth open, that's to represent the money's coming out. So I'm going to stand in front of this guy because at the moment, this is my lion traveling for a full year. All I'm doing is just spending money all the time and that's so different to the way that I had lived my life for so long. I was that line over there where I was trying to save all the time. I was trying to be really clever and smart about what I was purchasing and how I'd purchase it. Did I get a good deal? Like, and I can still do that today, but it feels very uncomfortable for me traveling for so long and spending so much money and not earning any income. Like that's just something that's I've never done in my, like since I left school. So this is my lion right now. <laughs> but it was amazing. There was, I was here on Sunday and it was so different to this. It's like so quiet now. It's a Tuesday morning. It's about 9.30 in the morning. So everyone's heading upstairs to work. But on Sunday, I was stood right here and it was full of loads of people. Lots of Filipinos, lots of Thais, lots of people from all over places of Asia. And apparently it's on a Sunday because it's a day when a lot of the people who have migrated here to work for the families, uh, who are like cleaners or housekeepers or nannies, they all get the day off on Sunday. So they all actually have a migrant day here in Central where they'll all take up a little spot, they'll bring some clothes, they might want to sell or exchange, they have food with friends, they chat, because there just isn't a place for them to have that community and socializing, so they'll come here. And that was really interesting to learn about, that that's something that happens just every Sunday here. Also, one of the really interesting things that I learned was that the Hong Kong dollar is actually pegged to the US dollar. So what that means is that it always stays steady at around uh, eight Hong Kong dollar to one US dollar. Now this is crazy. I had no idea that like 
this currency was pegged to another country, I just thought that, you know, obviously because there's been so much development here very early on, that that's helped to keep this economy going, but it seems like it's pegged with other economies, which is very interesting. In my mind, coming here from the UK, it's very confusing because, and also having just left from Nepal, like trying to get your head around numbers and currencies every time you enter a new country, it's so difficult to know what's good and bad. But um, basically it is, so if you see something that's like 10 Hong Kong dollars, you think, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. Like, uh, but it's, it's because you're, in my head's thinking US dollars, because that's the only other dollars I've ever worked in. But actually 10 Hong Kong dollars is 99 pence here. So just under one pound. So when you're paying like 35 Hong Kong dollars for a Starbucks or a coffee, or like $50 for, uh, $55 maybe for like some breakfast, or $100 even in some cases for some meals. I think I paid $190 yesterday for a burger and chips and an uh, Oreo shake. In my head, I'm like, oh my God, $190, but actually it's like 19 pounds. And that's pretty much what you would pay if you were gonna go to a burger restaurant in the UK at the moment. So yeah, just those kind of little things getting used to. But you can tell this is the financial part of Hong Kong because you are just surrounded by all of the tall towers all around you. We're gonna head up to something that looks a little bit different now though. It's in the centre here and it's just up these stairs. It's a very strange mix seeing HSBC with these palm trees with this kind of old style staircase. I think it's just the different mixes of modern with some of the more traditional here. So again this is something maybe naively I wasn't expecting to see. A cathedral here in Hong Kong. And of course it would be because the British were here for almost a hundred years before they handed back Hong Kong to China in 1999. I think it was like on a hundred year agreement. And so here at St John's Cathedral it was built like 170 years ago apparently. I haven't been inside yet. Uh, when we came here on Sunday, there was service going on, so you're not allowed to go in. It's interesting, we're going to have a look at another a temple after this. It's just a bit further along the route. But yeah, this whole area around here, even just the style of the building, you can see here with like, the balconies, the wooden shutters. Like, they're all very kind of old style red brick houses um, that you would obviously get in the UK. So it's interesting to see that mix again here is something that's coming up again and again wherever I found that the English have been historically you're probably going to find their architecture still hanging around very interesting to see what Maku is like because over there that was a different um, a, a special administrative region like Hong Kong but I think it was the Portuguese that were there so I'm interested to see if you're going to see lots of their kind of style of housing and design let's head on now to our next stop which is the world's longest Escalator. So we've even got shop by Marks and Spencers here in Hong Kong and uh, even saw Harvey Nichols uh, the other day as well. So you've got a lot of um, Western brands are obviously here. There's Western money here, right? Uh, a lot of luxury brands as well. It's like I've just stepped down from that church, which is literally just down the road behind me over there. And then you're like straight onto almost like in Manhattan in New York, really. Like huge, massive billboards, palm trees, taxis, although they have red and white taxis here. And quite a lot of McDonald's actually as well. And there's even an American Eagle. Dangerous. <laughs> so the part of Hong Kong we're in right now is in the bit that's down on the bottom of the island. So you're probably around only maybe three or four blocks this way and you get to the sea. But when you look this direction, it's a completely different landscape. And again, this is blowing my mind arriving here, is that actually, if you look up here, this is basically going all the way up the hill. And I'm just gonna climb up this one set of stairs just to show you what I mean, because you can't even see it here. I was so low down. Um, the height, you can see above there. It's like you've got all of these steps that lead all the way up and they call this the mid-levels in the middle area We're gonna to go to the escalators that will take us up to the mid-levels But then you've also got people who live much much higher up the mountain 
and you can see the apartment buildings there as well and that's where we're heading later is up to the peak which is the highest point in Hong Kong Island where we can basically look out hopefully over the entire island if it's not too cloudy so you can see behind me here people get on here and it's actually 16 different escalators that you kind of jump on from one to the next as you go up the mid-levels and all of these 16 escalators are reversible so what they do is in the morning they'll actually be coming down into the city so everybody can basically find their way from the mid-levels down to the central and then they'll switch the direction so they come back up again for people. There's also free travelators as well. This is one of the travelators where people just stand on and they get moved all the way up. It's super cool actually, let's jump on it and have a look. You can see where it's kind of heading. It's going through some of these narrow streets here and it's kind of then bending around the city landscape and going up that way. So let's go and experience it, shall we? That was just two travelators on that journey. You could stay on that for another 17 different devices and just keep going. Maybe I will just spend an entire couple of hours just going up there and see where it leads to. But I'm hungry, I haven't had any breakfast yet. So I'm gonna head to somewhere where I know they do some good egg tarts because that's a thing here. So I've got both of the egg tarts here. This is the Chinese one. This is like the puff pastry and the egg is more frothy on the inside. And this is more like a traditional egg tart that you might see. So let's give it a go and let's see which one I like the most. One of the great things here actually in Hong Kong is that there's so much just public seating and spaces for people to sit. It's everywhere in the city. And even last night I was in a park where there was even like exercise equipment for younger and older generations for mobility, which I was really impressed with as well. So the city has really invested in making sure there's space for people to sit, um, relax and enjoy things like an egg tart. Oh, wow, look at all that custard. It's like a glazed top. You can definitely taste a hint of egg in there, but it's more like custard. But there's like a little bit of egg. <laughs> so then this is the Chinese style egg tart. You can see much, much crispier around the side. The egg doesn't run all the way up to the top. It's kind of more inside the cake. So let's try this. Mmm. Oh wow, that crispiness is really nice. I like the puff pastry. And then the custard inside is less eggy. Like you can even see actually when you put them side by side, this one's got like much more filling in. But this one, the pastry is like overtaking the filling. I think the Chinese one for me, and I was not expecting that because I was I love this one so much, but that puff pastry is really good. So now we're heading to the peak tram. Basically a tram that's gonna take us all the way up the mountain here on Hong Kong Island. And then there's a viewing platform that you can also look out over the city. Let's see what the view is gonna be like quite cloudy. I mean you can still see the tops of the buildings so it should be okay. Yesterday the clouds were in the buildings <laughs> so we shall see. We've got a five minute walk. They have 20% discount on the price of the ticket if you go up before midday and it's quarter two. I managed to do it. I managed to get here in time. Amazing. What I had to do though, and if you are going to come here and try and want to use the morning ticket, then you have to buy it online. It's not available for you to buy at the desk when you get here. Thankfully I had 10 minutes, so I had enough time to on my phone and buy the ticket. So um, I managed to buy it, pay for it. You get an e-ticket then, you can scan. So if you know you're going to get here before midday, I'd recommend buying that online to save you 20%. I can see the tram lines up ahead actually. Wow. One thing I just noticed as well is that the viewing platform that you can pay for on a cop it doesn't open until 10 a.m. So if you're going to get the early morning ticket, the tram will start going up uh, very early, I think at like 7 a.m. So you, if you want to do the viewing platform, you probably don't want to try and go up there before 10 a.m. because you won't be able to access it. I just take 
taken us all the way up here. We're now like higher than the buildings. Mental. We're like almost in the clouds. The price of the morning ticket costs 180 Hong Kong dollars, which is around £11.89. And that gets you the tram up here, the tram back down, and it gets you entry onto the viewing platform area. So you could just pay for the tram up and down and you can walk around like all of this area. And there's like a shopping center as well. So you could do all of that. But the next bit that's up here, you wouldn't be able to access if you don't have a ticket for the viewing platform. Okay, let's check out what this view is like. Is it worth coming up here to the Sky Terrace? I feel like I'm about to find out in the next five seconds. <laughs> oh wow, this is crazy. <gasps> wow. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh. Wow, like the clouds are even just being caught here in the mountains. So you can't even see the top of some of these buildings over here. It's all a bit just hazy. Don't even. <laughs> if you look all the way down there, wow! We're actually in the clouds right here. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen this before in my life, where like the clouds are literally brushing past the trees because the wind's blowing all of the like this way. Can you see down here all of those clouds that are kind of being poured up over the side of the mountain, going this way. Imagine the kind of views you'd be getting if you were living or staying in those, in those buildings. But you have quite a bit of a journey to get up and down all the time. <laughs> I was expecting that it was going to be really, really cold up here because we're about 430 meters above sea level, but it's not at all. It's quite humid down there in the city. Uh, a bit cooler temperature wise today, like 26, 27 degrees. But up here it's not at all cold, there's a bit of a breeze, but that's quite nice, especially with the humidity in the city. <laughs> so that was the Sky Terrace, 428. Um, I mean, it's definitely worth it, those views are stunning, absolutely amazing. Maybe bring a coat, especially if it's raining, bring it. Like an umbrella wouldn't even do, bring a coat. It's very strange. Like up here on this mountain where you're so high and there's like this massive shopping center. Like you think you're in a retail park or just in like a normal village, the way that like it's all been cobbled and you've got everything. But <laughs> yeah, there's definitely lots to do up here. There's a selfie world, there's um, Madame Two Swords, there's obviously the Sky Terrace right at the top there, or you've got shopping as well. And also go have a walk over this other side of the island of a peak over here. I suppose you didn't have to necessarily go to that Sky Terrace, you might be able to still get some good views. Depends whether you're one of those people that has to have the highest of everything <laughs> and the most of everything. And amazing in Hong Kong here is got all these massive modern skyscrapers and buildings and then bamboo is used as scaffolding here so then you can see like that building down there you've got over there like bamboo poles are just literally on the ground there's nothing like in um, the uk or in like america you would have metal poles as scaffolding and they'd have to be like secured to like kind of ground pieces and then those ground pieces would basically stop anything from happening because like look at this like, this does not look like it's actually settled because it's not even touching the ground but it's supporting that structure of scaffolding up above which to me is just like i can't get my head around it it's mental <laughs> this is an area which used to be for hawkers before world war ii and then it's kind of been now converted into an expat district so on Google Maps it says there's lots of little shops and restaurants, places to eat and Soho's not too far from here, it's literally probably about maybe three or four streets away but 
There's also little shops as well. Very narrow pavements here. Like you can only really fit one person on here and maybe they'll push two people can squeeze past and barely more than one car can fit down here which is crazy <laughs> here we're checking out this area which is known as Taekwon and this is basically the old central police station area you can see how different it looks already to the rest of the streets behind me because you've got again red brick buildings you've got the shutters and then you've kind of got this European style building here so this has all been converted from the old police station into like a shopping area it's so strange seeing like massive huge like skyscrapers right behind that kind of building structure it looks so out of place here this style of building like this traditional I suppose what you'd expect in like Western world or like especially in Europe and then they'll be having these massive big towers let's go and see if we can find the old prison yard by Kai Wong Lane you can see here we've got a fortress or a wall which is probably going to be a prison yard behind the old police station and then you can see the old Hong Kong police it was that front building 1919 the back of what we were just looking at there in the square so they're just inside this building now about to head into number 11 a hole this is really helpful oh no it's time to rain <laughs> I love all this art installation though this is so cool. Very, very cool. What is it like to be in prison? <laughs> Let's go and find out, shall we? Oh. This is what it would be like to be in prison. Oh. There's a call bell here. Maybe you ring for attention. There are the toilets. Oh, I bed. Thank you. Wow. I would not want to be in there. There's like a contemporary museum or art gallery there. And then there's all these different halls that you can go in and visit. And I've just been into one of the halls behind me where it talks to you about what happened when prisoners arrived here and the process they'd go through, like fingerprint and ID check. But there's also, you can see more prison cells and like newer modern buildings here. And this is the prison yard. It's quite nice actually, like a lot of it's free. You don't have to pay to, to go into some of these. I think you have to pay to go into the contemporary, but it's definitely worth checking out. Um, and also again there's like nice spaces down here where people can sit on the stairs and eat food so yeah I recommend coming to check this place out even if not just to come and have a look at like how tall these concrete walls are that would have kept the prisoners in and how crazy how all of these apartments and buildings that would have all been able to have seen and been looking down on this because like this prison isn't on its own separate island this is a bang in the middle of like hong kong island so it'll be so overlooked i also love how they've made this prison into like a coffee shop <laughs> this is crazy yes hi hi a coffee shop prison yeah <laughs> So in some of these cells here, they've actually knocked all the way through. So it kind of gives you a bit of a perspective of like how, what, there have been a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people all living in this space here. Um, it's a lot brighter and it's made a lot nicer than the other cells that we were just looking at earlier. 
but this is such a clever use of the space because obviously there's so many different prison blocks so one of them can be a place where people can go and learn about the prisoners and then this can be something that's being used in a different light something that's different having its own little coffee shop here I love how this is somewhere that used to be where people were kept prisoner and they still maintain that history and you're able to learn about it and experience what it was like through the shared stories in the old prison blocks but then they've converted the police station and other buildings into places now where people can socialize and have food and yeah it's actually really nice because it could have been so easy to just knock all this down and build more tower blocks right all around because that's what people need is accommodation but it's nice that they've kind of maintained the heritage here but also allowed it to be more of like a place where people can come and enjoy and then we're heading into the central market so this is a big food market here where there's lots of options places to eat wow kind of very different to what I was expecting. I was more expecting like an actual fresh food market, but it seems more like a department store really, with loads of concessions. So you've got like all these different food stores here that are all selling different type of foods. Looks like it changes, like almost like pop-up places for food. So we're now in the center of the central market. And there's like a eating area down here on the ground. And then you're overlooked by the Hang Seng Bank building. And on the other side, <laughs> you're overlooked by the Peak Mountain that we climbed up earlier. Very different from what my expectations were of this market. I was thinking it was going to be like a fresh food market, like fish, vegetables. But it's not, it's all little eateries, all little like kind of um, restaurants. Yeah. So, this is a good place to come for some lunch. And our next stop is going to be going into this temple here. It is beautiful. It's a Teo temple. So we're going to go check out what that looks like inside. And when we cross the road, we're going to get killed by taxis. What's amazing in there, so peaceful. And there's these big incense circles that you can offer that could burn for anything up to 60 days, I think. And they're kind of hanging above you in the ceiling. Um, and when you do pick up incense to burn in memory of somebody, you do free incense at a time. It's peaceful. And lots of offering with different deities or um, gods there. So very similar to other temples. Also, you can't take any video or photo inside, so... You won't be able to see it unless you come for yourself. So our next stop is the Western Market. And it's just in this building over here. Now I'm intrigued to see what this is going to be selling. On the last place I was expecting it to be, when I said it was a food market, I thought it was going to be like fresh food, like fresh fish, vegetables, etc. Let's see what's in this Western Market shop. Why is there a British telephone box? What? <laughs> Actually smells cleaner than a, one of these we'd have in England. But look, look, it's actually still got a proper mechanism. Hello. Wow. I was not expecting to see this. beautiful building. So not really what I was expecting. When you call something a market, there might be like maybe 20, 30 shops here. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's not what I was expecting. Brought me out just near the ferry terminal. Also the motorway that's overhead and also the bus terminal it looks like too. So I'm finally going to get a tram back to my hotel and have a rest because I am shattered. It's as simple as that. You just pay when you leave. 
get on for free and then you have to pay at the front when you leave the tram which is pretty cool and very simple there's just one flat fee it's three dollars for everybody on the tram who's an adult which is also makes just things simple and easy that's my one day itinerary here on hong kong island i hope you have enjoyed it uh, if you have then please hit that like button and also why not subscribe below and you'll be able to stay in touch with all of my videos of things going on from hong kong there's going to be a couple of other one day itinerary videos and yeah then we'll be heading into china next so as always thank you for watching and i will see you on the next video bye